السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So in this same year in the fourth year of the Hijjah uh, sorry the fourth year in the month of the Hijjah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, another very important event happened in his life this is his personal life now and um, this is the story pertaining his wife to be Zainab bin Tujahshin radiallahu anha now I know the name Jahsh by now should be very familiar to you because of the great companion Abdullah bin Jahsh was killed in Uhud and was buried with his uncle Hamza radiallahu anhu because Abdullah bin Jahsh his mother is Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib so he was actually a cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam okay so Zainab was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam um and we saw how Abdullah bin Jahsh was killed so he left behind his sister Zainab bint Jahsh and we saw how their sister Hamna Hamna bint Jahsh was the wife of Mus'ab bin Umair she was the wife of Mus'ab bin Umair so you see how all the companions one way or another they were related okay so this is Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu anha her mother is Umayma bint Abdul Muttalib the uncle of the uh, the aunt sort of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and zainab was one of the first muslims she accepted islam at a very early stage and then she made hijra to medina now when she made hijra to medina the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day or before that, maybe we should introduce the other character in this story. And that is Zayd ibn al-Harith. Who all of us we know, by now we should know very well. Zayd ibn al-Harith ibn al-Shurahbil al-Kalbi radiallahu anhu was the first, one of the first four Muslims. Because Zayd, if you remember, he was a slave of Khadija. But then Khadija gave that slave boy to the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu let him free. Said, you're not a slave anymore. And he grew in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu like his son. To the point that, and the Prophet Sallallahu used to love him a lot. To the point that in Mecca and even in Medina up until this stage, people just used to call him Zaid Ibn Muhammad. Zaid Ibn Muhammad. Even though he's Zaid Ibn Harith. Okay? That was how close... He was to the Prophet ﷺ. Okay? But he's an ex-slave. So what happened in the third year, which is the year we just passed? Um, the Prophet ﷺ, he sent news now to his cousin sister, who is Zainab bint Jahsh. As you see, Zainab bint Jahsh is the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. She's Qurashiya. She's from the noble family of the Arabs. Okay? The Prophet ﷺ sent news to her saying, I want you to marry Zaid. I want you to marry Zaid. And she outrightly refused. She outrightly refused Zainab bint Jahsh. She said, I am better than him in terms of lineage. She is Qurashiya, she is from the Quraysh, a cousin of the Prophet. ﷺ. Well, Zaid is an ex-slave. Okay? He's an ex-slave. They never used to do that. But this was one of the many weddings the Prophet ﷺ, he set up and he instituted to break down those barriers which were in Jahiliyyah. The barriers of, oh, this tribe is lower than this tribe. Oh, he is lower than her. He can't get married to her. The Prophet ﷺ came to remove that. That is what we're going to see. After that, the Prophet Sallallahu he got Bilal, who we know as black, from Africa. 
a slave in Mecca until he was bought by Abu Bakr and let free. He got him married to the sister of Abdurrahman bin Auf, who was again one of the top Qurayshi families, to break those barriers. In Islam, we don't have this nonsense. It's not my qabila. We don't have that. We are Muslims, that's what merits you. You have good deen, good akhlaq, you're getting married. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he sent those, that message to Zainab, she refused. So when she refused, it is said, Wallahu a'lam, I didn't have time to look at this, is it authentic or not? That is when Allah revealed the verses, or the verse in Surah Al-Ahzab. وَالْمُؤْمِنَ is not for the believer, male or female. إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا When Allah and His Messenger decide a matter, أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةِ That they should have their other choice. Okay? And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, then he has gone astray, far astray. When the verse was revealed, Zainab, she said, Okay then, I have to submit. That is when she submitted and she accepted to be married to Zayd, who until then was called Zayd ibn Muhammad. Okay? And he was called Hibbu Rasulillah, the most beloved person to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alright? So they got married, but their marriage did not last for long. They had problems. And this is something natural. It's something which is just, it just happens sometimes. And every marriage has ups and downs. You know? Some ups are really good ups, some downs are really nasty downs. Every marriage has those though. At the end though, people live together or at the end, some people are not destined to be together forever. It's just a natural part of life. It's not the end of life. In fact, Allah, He says in His Quran, if they fear Allah and they separate, Allah will bless each of them. After they go their separate ways, Allah will bless them with His expansive favors so sometimes it happens so Zaid married Zainab okay but then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he got revelation from Allah telling him that Zaid is eventually going to split and divorce his wife and you will marry Zainab now this was revelation which was given wahi, which was given to the Prophet ﷺ. But it was not wahi which he was supposed to tell people. It's just information given to him. This is what is going to happen. So this used to bother the Prophet ﷺ a lot. Why? Because first he loved Zayd a lot. So to see his marriage end was not good. It was like his son. It was basically his son. Secondly, that was his cousin, Zayn, uh, Zainab. So to see her marriage end that was not good. And third, in Jahiliyyah, before Islam, this would never happen. Because the son, through adoption, like Zayd was adopted by the Prophet ﷺ, they used to treat him like, his, like their own blood son, like your full son. So whatever laws apply to your son, they apply to the adopted son. Okay? So it was never, the Arabs would never Mary, the woman was divorced by the adopted son. That was just a shame for them. If It was a big shame. It wasn't just something bad. It was just sh something shameful. So the Prophet ﷺ, he, um, he held this to himself. And he used to bother him. Why? Because the munafiqun and the enemies of Islam in Mecca and wherever, they're going to use this against him. Oh look, he got married to the Divorce, divorcee of his son basically and they used to call him Zaid bin Muhammad until the same year now the same surah surah al-ahzab if you read it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses which say what ud'uhum li'abaihim wa aqrabu aw huwa aqsatu indallah the issue of changing the names and the identity of the adopted children was removed he is not Zaid bin Muhammad, he is Zaid bin Harith. So from that day it had to be changed. And in fact, later on the Prophet will say, 
And this is something you have to know. It's one of the most major sins in Islam to deny your lineage. Just because you think your family is not a big royal family, so you change even your name. You say, no, I'm not from those people. That's one of the most major sins in Islam. Okay, that's one of the most major sins in Islam. That is why from that day he was called now Zaid bin Harith, not Zaid bin Muhammad anymore. And then now this law came down, or was now coming down, the law of the marriage. That since he's not your son anyway, he's just adopted, you can marry the woman he divorced. Okay, so this is what happened during this time. So Zainab and uh, Zaid, they used to have their issues, you know, between them in their marriage. And Zaid would get frustrated and would come to the Prophet Wasallam and say to him, I'm tired, I'm done, I'm going to divorce her. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say to him, Ittaqillaha, amsik alayka zawjik, fear Allah, hold on to your wife, fear Allah, hold on to your wife. Even though he knew this is really going to end. And you hide in your soul, as Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, the 33rd chapter of the Quran, you hide in your soul, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what Allah is going to make apparent. So he was not told to say to people, this is going to happen. And he used to bother him. But Allah tells him, it's going to happen, it's going to come out open anyway. Okay? But the Prophet ﷺ used to tell him, Fear Allah and hold on to your wife. Fear Allah and hold on to your wife. Tell him. Now, they stayed together for a year, just one year. And um, she used to harm him by her tongue, meaning she had a sharp tongue. Uh, some of you women got those blades, man. She cuts you into pieces, bro. There's two sentences, destroys your life. That's not a good quality, though. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu says, there's nothing which destroys a woman's marriage like her tongue. She might not be good in other things, you know. She's not the best Muslim, maybe, in terms of she doesn't fast every Monday and Thursday and she didn't remember as much Quran and she's not the most gorgeous like Umm Salama. She's not the most smart like Umm Salama or Aisha. But those, you can deal with that. But a sharp tongue, it destroys a marriage. So, Zaid would come over and over again to the Prophet ﷺ and he'd say to him, Amsika alayka zawjak. Fear Allah, hold on to your wife. Okay? Fear Allah and hold on to your wife. Because the Prophet ﷺ also that's what he wished for them. He wished for them to be happy. وَإِذْ تَقُولُ لِلَّذِي أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ زَوْجَكَ وَاتَّقِ اللَّهِ Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 37. And when he used to say to the one who أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ أي بالإسلام, The one who Allah has blessed him, meaning by making him Muslim. وَأَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ And you blessed him, meaning the Prophet ﷺ blessed him or favored him by making him like, him, like his own son and making him a free man. You used to say to him, Amsika alayka zawjaka, hold on to your wife. Wattaqillaha and fear Allah. Atukhfi fi nafsika mallahu mabdihi. And you hide in your soul what Allah is going to make apparent soon. Wallahu wa taqsha al-nas. And you used to fear people. Wallahu ahaqqa an taqsha. Well, Allah deserves more that you fear him. Alright? That is why when this finally happened, Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, Aisha, Radiallahu anha, they used to say, you know, there's some people who are enemies of Islam, they use this story to attack the Prophet. Okay, they bring some fantasized, made up, horrible story that the Prophet used to eye Zainab and he used to like her. That is why he plotted for Zaid to divorce her so he can marry her. That, that, that is not befitting for you to say it about your own father, right? My father would never do that, right or wrong? What about the prophet, the greatest of prophets, the most complete character? A man who already had four wives, why would he want to do that? Why would he marry them in the first place? Get them married if he wanted her by us for herself, right? For himself. 
Anyway, Anas bin Malik is saying, if the Prophet وسلم, was to hide something of the Quran, of Revelation, this was the only thing you would have hid. But this shows you even this. He could not hide it. Why? Because his job was fulfilled completely. He did, he did his job. He conveyed everything he was told to convey. Because this Quran you read, and when you say to you, the one you Allah blessed and you blessed, hold on to your wife. Who told us these verses? It's the Prophet So if you really was to hide something, you'd hide this. But even though he used to bother him, he knew that for his for him to complete his mission, he has to convey everything. Which is a proof to show you nothing is left out, there's nothing hidden, this is a complete message. Usually people, they say what is for them, what is good of them, they don't say what is against them. Okay, but the truth, it speaks for what is for you and what is against you. So this is another place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reprimanded his prophet. Just like where? In Abba Sawatawalla, he told him, don't do that. Because the blind man came, if you remember. Just like where? The prisoners of Badr. The Prophet Sallallahu he decided to take their money. And Allah revealed the Quran, which we read to, until today. He told him that was the wrong decision. So this was one of those decisions also. So, Aisha said, لَوْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَمْ كَاتِمًا شِيئًا مِنَ الْوَحْيِ if the Prophet ﷺ was ever to hide anything of the wahi, he would have hide this. But he never hid this one also. So Zayd divorced Zainab and once her idda finished, how long is the idda of the ah ah ah? Hold your horses. I'm asking the man. How long is... Uh, let me talk, Habibi. How long is the idda of the divorced woman. Father Sheikh. Divorced woman. Yes. Very good. Is he right or wrong? He said three months. He's not right, Habib? Thalathat quru. Amahu al quru. Very good. Three menstrual cycles. She gets a period, then she gets a period. Third time she gets a period, she becomes clean. Khalas. If you didn't take her back, she's not yours anymore. New nikah, new wali, new mahar. If she agrees. If she says I'm bouncing, she bounced, you missed her. Anyway, three months. Okay, which is actually three menstrual cycles. So after Zaid finished her uh, 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 waiting period, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Zaid, now listen to this story. After Zainab finished her idda, the Prophet ﷺ sent Zayd and said to him, Go and mention me to Zainab. Meaning, go tell your ex-wife that the Prophet ﷺ wants to marry you. That's a tough mission. Man, I'm telling you. That's a tough mission. Okay? So Zayd, he had no choice. This is the Prophet of Allah speaking. So he went. Okay, he went and he used to find her at home, wherever she, la she lived. And when he saw her, he could not say it. He could not even look at her. He could not even look at her. He says, Zayd, radiallahu anhu, he says, So I turned and gave her my back. And I started walking away and I said, Ya Zainab, O oh Zainab, Abshiri, have good news. Arsalani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah has sent me. Yadhkuruki, he's mentioning you. Okay? Which means he's proposing to you. And he left. But she replied saying, Ma ana bi sani'atin shay'an, I am not one to do anything. Until I consult my Lord. So she stood up in her masjid, the home masjid, where she prays. And she prayed, probably istikhara. Or she just prayed and then made dua to Allah. And that is when 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِنْهَا وَطْرَ This is also Surah Al-Ahzab When Zayd, the Quran, which means Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 37 فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِنْهَا وَطْرًا When Zayd had finished his time with her زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا Now listen carefully Allah says to his Prophet زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا Okay yeah, I was my Arab student, my Arabic students, not my Arab students, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sleep of the tongue. Zawajna kaha. We got you, Muhammad, married to her. It's one word in Arabic. In English it means Zawajna kaha means we got you married to her. Now you know you have to study Arabic. Zawajna kaha in Arab in English translates to we got you married to her. Okay? One word. Okay, now what is the wisdom? Allah now explains the wisdom. We got you married. So this what first of all tells you what? Fadl Shaykh, what does it tell you? Zawajnaka. That this nikah was done by Allah. There was no writing. There's no need for a wali. There's no need for witnesses in this nikah. Allah has got you married, O Prophet, to Zainab. Okay? And then Allah mentions the wisdom again, the same verse, Surah Al Ahzab, verse 37. So that, the wisdom is so that the believers from this day on forth until the end of, day of, of, of this life, so that the believers will have no problem in the matter of marrying the divorced women of their adopted sons. It is allowed, it's halal from this day on. وَكَانَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ مَفْعُولًا And the matter of Allah will always be achieved. So the Prophet ﷺ came to her when the verse was revealed and he recited to her the verse and he took her as his wife. Okay? That is why Zainab, she used to brag and boast. Okay? She used to boast to the other wives and she used to say to them, your families got you married to the Prophet Sallallahu But I, Allah got me married to his Prophet from the seven heavens. She used to brag and boast. She deserved it, of course she deserved it. That was only her. There was no other woman we know who had this. Not of our Prophet or any other Prophets for that sake. She was married in the seven heavens. The Ithn was brought down. Khalas. She's your wife. So she used to brag about that. She used to boast about that. Zainab radiallahu anha. Okay. And the Walima, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he consummated the marriage, he did the Walima. And it was meat and bread. Very simple Walima as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to do. And um, Anas bin Malik, he says, that was the biggest walima the Prophet ﷺ ever did for any of his wives. Okay? That was the biggest walima he did for any of his other wives. And people were filled with um, bread and meat. Bread and meat. And it used to be groups. They used to come in groups. They would eat and leave. Another group would come and eat and leave. Another group would come and eat and leave until they all had been fed. That was the walim of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to um, Zainab bint Jahsh. Okay. Now, during this same time when these people are coming and eating and leaving, there's a group of people who came and they ate, but they did not leave. They sat. And they were talking. You know how you do it. You get invited. The food has been served. You eat. And you're just sitting there. You're talking, right? That's what we do usually. Because now there's going to be tea. After tea, there's dessert. After dessert, there's green tea. Right? That's how we do it. So they just sat there. So the Prophet ﷺ, he would come. Because he'd want to enjoy with his wife. But he'd find the people, they're sitting there. And because he was very shy... The Prophet ﷺ was very shy. He would leave. 
He wouldn't say anything to them. He can't say to them, leave. He would go. When he comes back, he saw these three men. They were still sitting there. They were just talking. They are not knowing what they are doing, obviously. They just sat and they are talking. The Prophet ﷺ left again and then he came back and they were, sitting, uh, they were still sitting there. Okay? Until they saw that the Prophet ﷺ had done that, then they got the point and they left. Okay? And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or before that, sorry, so one of these times when the Prophet ﷺ came and saw the people sitting there still, he left. He was shy to tell them, leave. So he went to the house of Aisha. He went to the house of Aisha and she said, as uh, sorry, he said, Assalamu alaikum ahla bayti rahmatullah. It is the sunnah, you enter your house, you say, salam. Right? She replied, Aisha, alayka salam wa rahmatullahi. And she said, Kayfu wajadta ahlak? How do you find your new wife? Barakallahu lak. May Allah bless you. That sounds very sweet, eh? Very sweet. Very brave. Fataqarra Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hujari nisa'ihi kullahun. And he visited all his other wives. Okay, and they said everything same just like Aisha said. They know the protocol. Tell you. And then he returned to his house and the guys were still there. And the guys were still there. And the Prophet ﷺ, because of his shyness, he could not tell them to leave. Okay. And Anas, he says, so I don't remember, I told them to leave. Because Anas was the young boy who was the servant of the Prophet as you know, his mother brought him to the Prophet and said, this, boy young, this young boy of mine, Anas, he is going to be your servant. Anything he'll do for you. Okay? He said, either I told them to leave or they just got the idea and they left. And then that is where Allah, he revealed the verses of hijab. And this is the hijab of that the wives of the Prophet ﷺ are not to be seen by any other man. And this means women in general. Because before that, you, they could enter any house and there's a hadith you'll see soon. They could sit, I could sit basically with your wife or your wife and we can eat together. Because it was allowed still. You get it. This was when the ayat of hijab were brought down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 53, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, la tadkhulu buyuta nabiyya. Do not enter the houses of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Illa accept an yu'dhana lakum when you're given permission. Ila tu'amin, to eat food. So now you cannot eat. This is the hijab. I'm sure you understand by now, hijab is not the piece of cloth you wear. That is part of it. Hijab is the concept of modesty. She's not your wife. She's not your sister. She's not your mother. You're not related to her. You can marry her. You don't have, you can't sit with her and look at her like that. That is what hijab is about, to preserve the modesty. Do you get it? So this was the physical hijab. Don't enter into his houses without him being there. With his wife sitting there. Okay? Illa accept and you then alakum when you're permitted. When you are permitted. Illa to a food. And once you're fed, you should leave. Walakin, Ida Duitum, but when you're invited, Fadhulu, then enter. Faida to Aimtum, once you have been fed, Fantashiru, leave. Wala musta anisina. Hadith. Don't sit and start talking about everything. And this is the adab, the, the manners of being invited. Our religion is very beautiful. There's manners of everything. One of the manners of being invited anywhere, especially to someone's house. If they said, come, there's food. You go eat. Once you have ate, you make dua for them and you leave. Okay? Okay? Unless they say, no, 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 I want you to sit. Then you can sit. 
Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. وَلَا مُسْتَأْنِسِينَ لِحَدِيثٍ إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ يُؤْذِي النَّبِيَّ فَيَسْتَحِي مِنْكُمْ The Prophet, that, the act of you sitting back and he wants to come and sit with his family but he's too shy, that used to bother him. فَيَسْتَحِي مِنْكُمْ But he was shy of you. He couldn't tell you guys leave. Okay. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَسْتَحِي مِنَ الْحَقِّ But Allah is not shy of telling the truth. Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 53. Allah is not shy of telling you the truth. وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعًا Now from today, if you are to talk to the wives of the Prophet ﷺ to ask them of something, فَاسْأَلُهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ Ask them from behind the hijab. The veil, the wall, the curtain. Not face to face like that. Okay? ذَلِكُمْ ذَاتْ أَطْهَرُ is more pure لِقُلُوبِكُمْ for your hearts وَقُلُوبِهِنَّ and their hearts the wives meaning the women in general and that is why from that day on that was to be the way they would communicate with the women and this is why we say this is the point after the Prophet ﷺ married Zainab bin Tijahsh the ayat of hijab they came down okay the ayat of hijab they came down. And this only came down, okay? Also, now we're talking about the clothing of hijab, the clothing of hijab. Before that, the woman could wear the traditional clothes the Arab women wore that time. I'm not going to say the woman could wear whatever they want, because some of you might run with that. I said, oh, you know that sheikh, he said that the woman could wear whatever they want. I didn't say that, and they never did that. They wore clothes. Whatever they wore, I don't know. But I'm sure they're not indecent. Okay? Now the ayat of even the physical hijab, the clothing, will be revealed. And this was from the desire of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Because Umar was one of those men who still had the proper ghira. Actually, what do you say ghira in English? Jealousy. Prote it's called protective jealousy because jealousy in itself is not good. He had the protective jealousy to protect. You protect your women. Your sister, your mother, your wife. It's a good jealousy. It's, in fact, if you don't have it, you're not a man. In fact, if you don't have it, you're going to be punished in the hellfire. Okay? It's good protective jealousy. You protect your women. So Umar always used to say to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, يَدْخُلُ عَلَيْكَ الْبَرُّ الْفَاجِرُ they come to your houses, some people are good, some people are not good. Why don't you tell your wives to cover themselves? Why don't you tell your wives to stay in the other room? Umar would repeatedly tell the Prophet wasallam this, until Allah revealed the ayat of hijab. And it was one of the many things which Allah revealed after the idea had come to Umar. Allah had given the idea to Umar. You get it. In fact, one story says, Aisha, she says, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ used to go out to the washroom at night because during those days, the washrooms were not near the houses. It was the traditional way. The washrooms are far into the desert. So they only had to go at night. So they would go together at night. Okay? And whenever we'd go out, Umar would say to his, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You should tell your women to cover themselves. Okay? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would not do anything. Right? Until one day, Sauda bint Zam'a, radiallahu anha. And you have to know, by now, Sauda is number one. Right? She's number one. Number one in what? Uh, in order, in order, not in love. Come on, wake up people, come on. Not in love. In love it is Aisha, everybody knows that. Okay? No, Khadija's dead, radiallahu anha, leave her. Okay, now we're talking at this point, Saud is number one, because she is the one who the Prophet ﷺ married when Khadija died. 
So she's te technically, we call her the queen of the house. <laughs> you know, she's the queen of the house. So when she came out one day to go to the washroom at night, and she used to be a tall woman. She used to be a tall woman. Umar, because of his jealousy, he called her out. said, Ya Sauda, we know it is you. Even if though it's at night, we know it's you. You cannot hide. And that is when Allah, why did he say that, Umar? Because he wanted to enforce his idea of they, had to, they have to cover themselves. That is when the ayat of hijab were revealed. Okay? Which say what? Again, in Surah Al-Ahzab. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, O Prophet, Qul, Qul li azwajik, Say to your wives, Wa banatik, And say to your daughters, Wa nisail mu'mineen, And to the women of the believers, An yudnina alayhinna min jalabi bihinna, That they should engulf themselves, In a wide cover, Which is called jilbab. Okay? Thalika, Why? What is the reason behind that? Adna and yu'rafna fala yu'dhain. There is closer for them to be realized and recognized. These are respectable women. They should not be harmed. And look how Allah commanded his prophet how. Ya ayyuhan nabi, O prophet. Qul li azwajik. Number one, say to your wives. Number two, say to your own daughters. Because you start at home. You start at home. You don't go about telling, oh, you know, so-and-so, his wife doesn't wear hijab. And your wife is wearing worse than that. Your daughter is worse than that. No. You start at home. And then on Isa al mumineen And this verse, Allah is telling him, this rule is for all the Muslim women. This is when the hijab, the clothing hijab was instituted. So hijab as a concept we have known today is what? It is modesty. In the way you talk, in the way you mingle with women, men, men and women, women with men, it has to be behind something and the clothing also. Yudnina alayhinna min jalabi bihinna. And yudnina, the word used is yudnina, which means to engulf, to be completely covered. Tayyim. So this was when it was revealed. This was when it was revealed. So this was the marriage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And of course, nothing really happened other than the munafiqun. Some of them, they spoke against the Prophet saying, Oh, look, he married his um, adopted son's ex-wife. But other than that, people forgot it quickly. And that is one of the customs of Jahiliyyah, which Islam came to remove. Okay? You as a father, if your son got married to a woman... And divorces her. I'm asking the man now. Can you marry that woman after? She, he divorced him, your son. She finished her idda. Can you marry that woman? You can never marry that. You can never marry her, sorry. Ever, forever. You know that. Ever. She's your daughter forever. Even if your son divorced her. Not once, not two, not three times. She's your daughter forever. Just like you, the woman... If you are the mother-in-law, if a, a boy marries your daughter, okay, even if he divorces her, he cannot marry you ever. You are his mother, he is, she is your mother forever. But these are adopted children, they are not your real children. And that rule already has been changed. Don't call them Zaid bin Muhammad, no he's not, he's Zaid bin Harith. Anhu. So that was removed and the issue of marriage was also removed. And look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did it like that. Why? Why? What is one of the main reasons this happened? To show that, to show that, even though you disliked this culture, even you disliked this culture, the Prophet sallallahu is commanded not just to remove it, He's commanded to remove it and be the first one who practices against it. Do you get it? He was told you'll be the first one. Not just tell the people, oh, now you can marry your adopted son's ex-wives. No, you'll be the first one to do it. 
You know that. Why? Because so that, and it is mentioned by Sheikh Tahir ibn Ashur, rahimahullah. He says, this was mentioned and this was done like that, so that it doesn't become one of those things. We have this a lot, by the way. We say, yeah, it's halal, but you know, it's not the best thing to do. We look down on it. Do you understand me? We say yeah, it's allowed, but we think, oh, we good Muslims should not do that. No. Who's the best Muslim? The Prophet So if he was told to do it, you can do it. Do you get the point? That was the wisdom. That was the wisdom. And um, as for Zainab bint Jahsh, radiallahu anha, um, she lived until during the Khilaf of Umar. That is when she passed away. And um, Zainab, she used to be known, like we said, she's Qurashiyya, she's a cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, which also tells you it's a point to have to mention. I know some of you in your cultures, you don't marry your cousin. Okay? Now, you have to understand Islamically, there's no problem with that. And the issue of all oh, scientists and whoever doctors have said, they, be, they have weaker genes and they can become sick. That is not fully proved and it's not bulletproof itself. You can prove it, you can prove it otherwise. Okay? The bottom line is, Islamically reads aloud. And again, to show you that, the greatest Muslim did that, the Prophet ﷺ. So you can also do it, it's allowable. But let me say this, if your family is still not Muslim, and you are from one of those families, this is just taboo to them. Marrying cousins, well, what are you talking about? Don't go rushing today or tomorrow to your family, because it's the weekend, you meet your family or not Muslims, and brandish them on their faces with this. You know, in Islam, we can marry cousins. No. You're only telling them, don't become Muslim. They don't understand yet. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Zainab bint Jahsh, she was known for her lineage, she was known for her deen, and she was known to be very, very generous. She was known to be very generous. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I'm mentioning just a bit about her, even though we had agreed probably to talk about the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after we finish the seerah in detail. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said, أَسْرَعُ كُنَّ لَحَاقًا بِي أو لِحَاقًا بِي أَبْوَلُ كُنَّ يَدًا The Prophet ﷺ said to his wives, The one of you, meaning amongst you, my wives, the one who will catch up to me, earliest, meaning the one who will die the first amongst you, after I die. أَتْوَلُ كُنَّ يَدًا I'm very compelled to call you guys out my Arabic students, to translate that. Oh, you can't hide. I know where you're sitting. Yes, it's the one with the longest hand. Very good. MashaAllah, Barakallah, Fiqh. The one who die first and catch up with me, meaning in Jannah, is the one with the longest hand. So Aisha says, so we used to take our hands and measure them. <laughs> who has the longest hand? They took it literally. They took it literally. Who has the longest hand? Okay? Until when the Prophet ﷺ died, and with Zainab was the first one to die during the Khilaf of Umar. He, she says, Aisha radiallahu anha, then we realized the Prophet ﷺ not mean physically hand. It meant the one who had the longest hand, meaning the most generous. And we remember that Zainab was the most generous of us all. She was the most generous of, uh, of them all. Now listen to this part. And she used to have a job, whatever she did. In one narration says she used to sew things. She was a tailor. And whatever money she'd get, that was she's given at Sadaq. No, it's Zainab. Okay? You women, you get that. It shows your woman can walk or not. She can walk in a proper Islamic setting. And what she gets? 
is hers. Right? It's her money. It's not yours, brother. With all due respect, I'd love for me also to get part of her paycheck, my wife, but it's not mine. And that is how Zainab used to do it. The most generous of them. Tayyib, radiyallahu anha. And Aisha radiyallahu anha used to say, there was no other wife who was very close to me in terms of the Prophet's love. Meaning my, my closest rival. My closest rival was Zainab. My closest rival was Zainab. And I have never seen Walam Aram Ra'atan Qattun Khayran Fildeen Min Zainab. Aisha says, I have not seen any other woman stronger in Hadeen like Zainab. Wa Atqa Lillah, the most pious in front of Allah. Wa Asdaqa Haditha, and she was the most truthful in speech. Wa Awsal Lil Rahim, and she was to be the one closest to her relatives. وَأَعْظَمَ صَدَقَةً And she used to give most in sadaqa. وَأَشَدَّ إِبْتِذَالَ لِنَفْسِهَا فِي الْعَمَلْ الَّذِي تَصَدَّقْ بِهِ And she used to be the one with the most volunteering hours, we can say that. She says, وَمَدْ وَتَقَرَّبُ بِهِ لَاللَّهِ And she used to earn that money, whatever she gets, to get closer to Allah. مَا عَدَى She says that Aisha accept. سُورَةٍ مِنْ حَدٍ كانت فيها. She was a bit harsh. Like we said, she used to harm her husband, ex-husband Zaid with her tongue. So she had that harshness in her. I see many of you brothers relate to that. You're like, mm. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. And then she says to Aisha, وَتُسْرِعُ مِنْهَا الْفَيْئَةِ but she was also very quick to return and apologize. She was quick to lash out, what you call today to lash out, but she was also very quick to apologize. So this is Zainab, bint Jahshan radiallahu anha, and this is how she got married um, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, by the way, it was the f when she died, when she died during the Khilaf of Umar, after they washed her body, uh, Umar, when she died, Umar called out, he said, nobody should go and wash her or go and bury her except her family. Okay? And Asma bint Umais, who's a woman we're going to mention a lot in the seerah, she said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, all of the believers, meaning Umar, I'm going to show you, tell you about something. I saw the Habasha when they made Hijrah to Abyssinia. I saw the Abyssinians they used to do with their women when they die. فجعلت نعشن وغشيته ثوبا So she used the first one to make what we call what? The Na'ash. You know what the Na'ash? Um, let me speak, sorry. The Na'ash, we have it in our lands. Wherever you come from, we have a Na'ash, most of us. It's the thing you carry the dead person in and it's covered. Some of us, we just carry him in a normal um, stretcher. The body is shrouded, but it can be seen. No, the Na'ash is when the, whatever you carry the dead in is covered. That is the Na'ash. So she was the first woman in Islam to be put in the Na'ash. Okay? And Umar, she, he said, radiallahu anha, radiallahu anhu, ma ahsan hadha wa astarahu. How good this is and is good for the covering. Okay? And that is when he called, he said, to everyone, now you can go bury your mother. Now you can go bury your mother. Because she is the mother of the believers. Zainab bin Tujahshin, radiallahu anha. So we're going to stop here. All right? And uh, continue tomorrow if you're still alive.